So today we're stepping back towards Battlefield 1. DICE is still working hard at bringing content to this title, and we're not actually that far away now from the brand new Turning Tides DLC, which is launching in December. Alongside that, however, DICE is continuing their project of adding the Frontlines game mode to more and more base game maps, and with the latest update to the CTE version of the game, they've been testing out Sinai Desert again, with a modified setup compared to the last test, and a brand new map, St. Quentin Scar. With all of this new content coming to the game, and having multiple versions of the game, Battlefield 1 takes up a lot of space on people's PCs and on their consoles as well. So when Western Digital reached out a few weeks back, asking if I wanted one of their brand new SSDs, I was like, yeah, sure, I'll take one of those brand new SSDs off your hands. This is the WD Blue one terabyte. 3D NAND SSD, but considering Battlefield 1, the Battlefield 1 CTE, and the incursions test environment take up nearly 200 gigabytes of space on their own, a drive like this is perfect for me at the moment. The speed means I can load into maps faster, and for open world games like Assassin's Creed Origins, I'd say an SSD is almost a must now for PC gamers. So a massive thank you to Western Digital for hooking me up with this drive and for sponsoring this video. If you're interested in picking one up for yourself, head down into the description and click the link. That will take you to their product page. And just a quick mention, these drives can also be mounted into PlayStation 4s as well. So if you're running low on space or you just want super slick performance instead of that slow mechanical hard drive that's in there at the moment, then this might be a good drive for you. But back to Battlefield 1 and the CTE. Over the weekend, Sinai Desert and St. Quentin Scar, they were set loose to be tested by the community. And I think overall, most players were much happier with this new version of Sinai Desert. The previous version, that was heavily biased towards the Ottomans who had basically a downhill fight all the way to the British HQ. And that British HQ was out in the middle of an open stretch of sand, which wasn't ideal for defending. Now, the play area has been shrunk down a little bit and the map only features three flag locations in total. Both HQs have been moved as well, bringing the action much more in line with the rush game mode overall, but there have been a few changes that make this map a little bit different than playing it on rush. Firstly, the central flag near the archway, that has remained, which is a good thing, but it's even better now. The match starts with the archway completely destroyed already. If you played the last version, you'll remember this archway could be used by vehicles almost as a window to look through. Huge lines of sight and infantry would just suffer greatly on the other side. Now the flag is much more infantry focused, but vehicles can still play quite a big role. Flanking around the edges of the arch, they can peek around and fire shots at infantry and make them move. The vehicles also kind of become blockers for infantry who can flank around with them and then use the vehicle as a distraction. There are a few different passageways through the archway on the ground and that makes for good infantry battle areas and of course you can climb on top of the rubble so there's some good vertical gameplay as well. I think DICE has done a good job here at making this flag even more interesting than what it was before. Secondly, we have another good change. The British HQ is now inside the ruins location. That's far, far better than where it was previously. The telegraph posts are not in direct line of sight of one another anymore. That's another good move, and it provides the British with a strong position that they can defend if they are pushed all the way back. Now, the Ottoman HQ, that's been moved all the way to the front of the town rather than the back, and that provides them with quite a similar setup to the British, or what you could say is even better cover than what the British have got if they're pushed all the way back and the Ottomans have to defend their set of telegraph posts. The two HQs, they now sort of reflect one another much more than they did before, and I think that balances out the gameplay for both teams at either end of this Frontlines map. The other two locations, both in between the archway and the HQs on either side of the map, have similar lines of sight and protective points. The one closer to the British HQ, that's the A point, is out in open sand, but there are plenty of rock outcrops that defenders can use to hide behind. 
Scout players will still be able to pick you off, but if you move around a little bit, don't stay in the same location all the time, that will help you defend the point. The other one, the Sea Flag, closer to the Ottoman spawn, that sits in the two houses just outside the main town, again providing a good defensive position, but the buildings are destructible, so attackers can use that to their advantage. If the attackers bring that down, lose the flag and then come back up to it later, it opens the opportunity for scout players to use their sniper rifles from long range to take down those defenders. Overall, the two flags are quite different in their layout, but overall I think they offer similar gameplay opportunities, so in that respect, I'd say they're quite balanced. I have heard a few complaints that the Ottomans trying to move from the B flag to the A flag, and then from the A flag into the British HQ, they do struggle a little bit because there is very little cover in some of those open areas, and I played it a little bit myself, and I have to agree, there are a couple of issues there where long-range weapons can take you down, but the key to that part is using vehicles. If you can use a tank to cross over that area, you'll find you survive a lot more often than if you run over as infantry. It's still going to be a sore point on the map, I feel. It's not perfect, but it's much better than what it used to be. This new shorter length of game zone here on Sinai Desert, I feel it keeps the battle bunched up a little bit more, and overall it felt like there was a constant amount of action that was always happening. It helped keep the map feeling alive all the time, which I guess is what you want from a game mode that's moving backwards and forwards all of the time, with two different teams fighting it out over those flag locations. The action never appeared to stop, which was a good thing for me. Now moving over to St. Quentin Scar next, and this is a brand new entry into the Frontlines mix, and from the two games I played, I actually quite enjoyed it. This, like the new version of Sinai Desert, is also a three flag map, with the central flag focusing on the ruined church, and the two HQs sitting at the top and the bottom of the hill. Now the British forces, they have to move forwards from the town, and the Germans move down the hill from the huge expanse of trenches. Because the map is on a slope, I did feel that the teams sometimes struggle to attack certain positions. The Germans struggle to battle from the A flag, which is the ruined roads where all the artillery shells are, over towards the church flag. There's actually quite a lot of open ground there, and the British can kind of just sit in the church and look out at all the enemies just running forwards. There are a couple of flanking opportunities, but in general it's a very open space, and the Germans, when I was playing, found it hard to attack that point. Once you move away from that section of the map, however, cover does come into play. We've got a lot of destroyed buildings here on St. Quentin Scar, and as I mentioned, all those artillery shells lying everywhere do provide a lot of cover that enemies can hide behind, or you can use for cover if you're attacking. All those destroyed houses leading up to the German HQ do give the British plenty of cover moving that way, so I guess there is a balance overall. If the Germans were trying to come down that hill, they could also use all of that cover that's available. There is a balance there, but perhaps again, it's not perfect, but it's still a very good map that you can play on. I really liked the frontline setting here on St. Quentin Scar. I think because it's a western front map, you really get that front lines feeling, two massive teams pushing against each other. It feels authentic to the World War I era, and I could see it being a really good map in the front lines rotation. I'm sure it will come along in a future patch. The Frontlines mode getting more and more love as time goes on for Battlefield 1 is great in my eyes. And I think it's good for all players because the mode is coming to more and more base game maps. That's more stuff for all players of Battlefield 1 to get their teeth stuck into. I'll be covering more of the CTE soon. There are more changes and fixes coming our way that will, of course, change how Battlefield 1 plays and add new things. So make sure you look out for those videos very soon. A massive thank you today once again for Western Digital for sponsoring this video with their WD Blue 3D NAND solid state drives. Map loading times have never been faster with this thing installed in my PC. Again, if you want to check them out, there is a link down in the description. You can go and click that and it will take you to their product page. But thank you very much for watching. Leave me some comments down below about these two Frontlines maps and I'll be down there reading as many as I can. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.